what i have picked up with you is uh, uh with the mission passion and compassion you are also an amazing storyteller did you realize that ever <laughs> no. all that you need is an app that can type what you speak and i'm sure you will have many books to publish for vishwas i have uh, only two words to describe and those two words are that you are a self made man And yes if you have not subscribed to this channel yet then do subscribe and don't forget to press that bell icon so that you get early notification of the upcoming episodes I'm so happy that you enjoyed previous two parts of Vishwas in conversation with Dr Vinod Bihari Mathur chairman of india's national biodiversity authority no two childs are same you know they have to be different i mentioned when i said that uh, the genotype is same and yet uh, the individual responses are so very different we did have a five year difference between vinayak and vinam mm. and we thought this five year difference would be good enough uh, Uh, for all purposes but see the uh, attitude of the younger sibling mm. for him the first thing in life was to bridge this gap so for everything which he used to say we used to tell him that yes you will also get this mm. but when you become little old mm. so for example uh, uh, use of uh, a pen mm. use of a mobile which comes with an age Hmm. we wanted to say that okay when you will become like uh, brother or bhai he used to call him then you will get it hmm. but he was not prepared for him it was that uh, i should get it now hmm. and i should get at the same time everything hmm. which the elder one gets hmm. and uh, unlike the elder one hmm. he is so much uh, into socialization nobody could pass in front of our house without hmm. saying a hello or hi to him the younger one and mm. he had to talk whether it was a security guard or whether it was anybody who was walking past the house mm. he would engage in him with him mm -hmm. and in his own way mm. and with his pleasant smile he will attract them and engage them and mm. try to learn something from them to mm. know what uh, he wants to be mm. then we they went to the same school mm. but now i can tell you the difference which uh, this society the schools the teachers Mm. and sometimes parents to make mm. the comparison between two children mm -hmm. whether one likes it or not likes it it happens mm. and see we realize what the school was doing and for everything which he did or did not do they will say your brother was very different so they started comparing and uh, if i can quote vinamr making life miserable for him with the elder one focus was never an issue and with the younger one attention was always an issue mm -hmm. and we kept asking him that look you have to be serious you have to be more uh, this thing and vishwas you will not believe that because of this comparison which was going in the school classroom which mm -hmm. we could not avoid mm -hmm. we actually changed his school i have to explain that we took a call mm -hmm. and we discussed we said that look if this comparison goes on this guy will always be shadowed so in at at class 9th we took a very important decision we mm. uh, moved him from one school to the other mm. and see what transformation happens mm -hmm. in the new school he was a hero boy mm -hmm. everybody was saying oh you play football you do swimming you do this you do that and he was participating and he was excelling on his own mm -hmm. and he was so confident about himself that all those uh, things of getting a certificate or getting prize which he never got 
when he was in the brother school uh, in the new school he just became an over boy, uh, a hero boy he was soon uh, appointed monitor in the class and he was doing so jisko hum kehte hain ki personality mein nikhar aana that is where we started looking uh-huh. and uh, for him studies were important but they were not the only thing no event in the school could take place without his participation he started carving his own life mm-hmm. and uh, manifesting it and asserting it in a different way mm-hmm. and eventually uh, when uh, with his uh, board exams we were very worried but uh, he made through them with mm-hmm. reasonable uh, mm-hmm. this thing then came class 12 in class 10 now the boards have introduced environmental science entire energy was in making projects sometimes mm-hmm. water harvesting sometimes solar you know those projects are being made so mm-hmm. he was then continuously uh, studying only one subject and see now what happens the board exam results come so accepting in his environmental science where he scores some 92% mm-hmm. in all other subjects it is something like 65 or 70 or mm-hmm. 72 or something like that mm-hmm. so we tell him that why also you don't study uh, you study biotechnology and we get him admitted over there but 10 days before he has to go i am talking now uh, early july mm. so he says that uh, i don't want to study now uh, biotechnology what do you want to study he says i want to study environmental science mm. Mm. now we get really worried mm. and it was it is quite late for admissions and colleges and university mm. i start looking up uh, uh, at different curriculum and different options Mm-hmm. and you will not believe it was at that point i am now talking about 8 years back there mm-hmm. was not a single college or university in the country mm-hmm. which was offering an undergraduate degree in environmental science mm-hmm. and there is then he started doing uh, uh, his own homework and he comes up with three choices that uh, there is a manchester university in uh, in england and there is a university in sydney and there is one in uh, in uh, in uh, canada Mm. uh which which offers a uh, uh, undergraduate degree in environmental sciences finally uh because of his very strong wish uh we then sent him to uh university of manchester in uk to do mm. an uh, environmental science honors degree mm. so now he goes to uh, university of manchester mm. and does very well uh, in his environmental science honors degree what then happens is he finishes his graduation he has to go for his post graduation mm. so see he does his own homework and says that uh, i now don't want to study in england he says that whatever england had to offer i have imbibed that then he does his own homework and says that there is a united nations university in japan mm. in tokyo mm. and that university offers uh, another degree Mm. master's degree in biodiversity governance mm. and the only way you can get admission in that is writing an exam mm. so overnight he starts working and preparing and doing doing that and he qualifies in their exam and not only in their exam they give him a partial funding also so there he goes to this uh, university um, uh, united nations university or unu it is called mm. and uh, uh, gets his uh, master's. Uh, master's degree he starts looking at options and this and that and suddenly applies and gets uh, an internship in UNDP so now this guy is a transformed man so mm-hmm. immediately from a young student he is now turned into a mature young professional and uh, goes uh, to UNDP mm-hmm. so anybody who gets in touch with him mm-hmm. is uh, uh, impressed by his charm Mm-hmm. and his work mm-hmm. and his engagement mm-hmm. and uh, he starts doing some wonderfully well mm-hmm. and uh, the proud moment for me comes mm-hmm. that uh, both of us i was nominated by government of india and he was nominated by undp mm-hmm. to attend the world parks congress in sydney mm-hmm. so he came as a undp representative uh, mm-hmm. as an assistant mm-hmm. and i went from uh, government of india but mm-hmm. we are both attending the same conference after a year mm. we again have a discussion with him mm. and we say that look you have to think of your future mm. so very reluctantly he begins to understand 
mm. that there is something called phd also and uh, but the charm of working is mm. so much mm. and that uh, that uh, stipends and money which is coming in dollars is so attractive mm. and going to meetings and hotels and representing undp mm. is such a big charm he understands mm. and he says okay i will uh, try for a phd mm. but uh, again getting admission mm. getting funds mm. again is an issue mm. and eventually comes up with a phd program at mm. the university of tokyo again the uh, point is that you have to clear an exam mm. and uh, with 3 to 4 months of preparation and after several rounds of interviews mm. he then gets admission into the phd program mm. at one of the top schools in uh, university of tokyo on mm. environmental sustainability mm -hmm. and uh, not only that the uh, japanese government also offers full funding okay. uh, to those ha uh, so they, they are called as next fellowship and now everything is now taking shape and uh, he feels happy and we feel happy mm -hmm. so this guy who was never into academics is now getting into a full time uh, academics at a very rigorous school mm -hmm. so right now he is now in the final year so it has been a totally different experience where we had to constantly uh, struggle with one and uh, did not have to do anything with the other and yet both have given their own flavor and only time will tell that uh, what is the model for success mm -hmm. so there is no model for success for parents you have to take things in your stride and you have to work with your sibling and uh, the other thing which uh, the younger one has taught me to be patient and to also accept some failures in life mm -hmm. the younger one uh, had not such a smooth sailing there were many instances where uh, um there were rejections also in the university system also and in the um, uh, job system also accepting uh, failure is also a part of learning mm -hmm. and delays also is a part of learning it is not your own way all the time you will also have to give up you will also have to adjust and so that is a big learning for parents that uh, we have to be prepared that a the two child or children can be different the successes and failures operate differently your ability to cope with it is differently and uh, there is no fixed menu for everyone for success but basic ingredients are definitely the same a very successful husband very dynamic kids managing all three boys is not an easy job and i think uh, looking back uh, uh geetika has uh, managed to do all of that so well and yet professionally succeed in her own uh, career shaping lives of several others and hundreds of them and especially i'm saying this because the area that she works in with the impaired children and i think uh, that's also very significant how was that balance struck see i have to give uh, and i will be uh, absolutely truthful mm. that in the shaping up of uh, my career and bringing up the career of my children she has played a very monumental role her inputs were on a minute to minute basis mm. dealing with two children who were uh, trying to assert themselves in many ways was itself a challenge and to recognize them and i would say that she has done her responsibility in an extraordinary way as i said that her her role in shaping the career first i will talk of career of all three see uh, uh, i told you that we got married while she was studying mm -hmm. and uh, she was also she first did her uh, uh, mbbs degree and she also had to go for post graduation mm. so she also was successful in getting her admission for a post graduate degree she took a very historical uh, sacrifice if i can say so by uh, giving up the idea of going in for post graduation mm. so she, while all her friends while she had a degree while she had her admission letter in her hand she then decides that okay i will right now not do that 
I am now married. I have my other responsibilities for my husband, for bringing up my family and for my parents and for my uh, in-laws. So she takes this very historical call and uh, decides to not join for her postgraduate degree. Then uh, we move into Dehradun. I have joined WII and uh, we are now a young couple working over there. Fortunately for us, uh, there is a Government of India Ordnance Factory. Mm. So they advertise for a job and they are looking for a young um, uh, doctor and mm. she joins as a medical officer uh, mm. over there. But see now, as luck would have it, she is working there for a year and a half and there are possibilities of she getting a permanent position also. But then another turning point comes uh, in my life mm. that I have now to go to Oxford to uh, register for my PhD. So here again, she takes a step and she says that I will quit my job and we will all be together in England. So she quits her job and we all go to England. We stay over there and from a, a regular uh, medical professional, she becomes a housewife and uh, helps in rearing the younger one and helping me out in whatever manner. So the story of her sacrifices is not ending. Mm. The next one comes uh, after a gap of about 33, 34 years when uh, last year uh, after relinquishing uh, the position of Director WII, mm. I was appointed as you just mentioned, mm. uh, the chairperson of the National Biodiversity Authority and this authority is uh, headquartered in Chennai. Uh, we realized that uh, living at uh, three different places, uh, already three or actually five Mm. Vinayak is in Philadelphia, Vinamr is in Japan, and I would be in Chennai, and uh, she would be in, in Dehradun if she continues. Mm. So here again, she takes up a call and says that, look, I have done enough, and mm. uh, I can uh, give my voluntary retirement, mm. and I can come to Chennai. This is the third time in somebody's career, all mm. affecting her personal life and profession, mm. that she does that. Mm -hmm. So see, I have no words to acknowledge her gratitude, her foresight, her wisdom in doing that. And uh, all along uh, in her career in the National Institute for Visually Challenged, where she had to deal with the uh, less fortunate ones, the underprivileged ones, the visually challenged ones, mm -hmm. she has done uh, an exceptional job over there. Mm -hmm. And in the last two years of her service, and she is given additional responsibility of becoming uh, the principal of the school. So mm. there is a modern school over there for the visually challenged. She says, my only qualification is that I have taught my two young children. Mm. That's all. I don't know anything about school. I don't know anything about what happens in a school. Mm. But then she takes up that responsibility and has been excelling in that field. Mm. And uh, everything, again, as I said, she does. She will excel. So mm. all those responsibilities, uh, she has very gracefully taken and uh, very enthusiastic, very bubbly, mm. and uh, every responsibility or any responsibility which comes uh, in her way, she will jump at it and excel. Yeah, so incidentally, uh, her skills and uh, talent and experience is going to be made use by the uh, Indian Institute of Technology in Chennai. Uh, I'm sure you are aware that uh, the IIT systems, uh, the IIMs have also admitted a large number of challenged students, whether they are visually or auditory or mentally, all the students are there and the system has admitted them, but they don't know how to deal with them. So they are setting up a, or in the process of setting up a, a, a resource center and she is going to be advising them. And what has uh, Geetika's edition lately mm. is that she has taken into writing. Mm -hmm. writing of uh, articles and books and things. And I must tell you that as of today, mm -hmm. she is the only one who has written a book mm -hmm. on visually challenged uh, um, and uh, what are the implications and how to handle and deal with that mm -hmm. under a single authorship. Look at the uh, journey of all four of you. Uh, there is one common thread. And that thread is an immense capacity to network. And network not only at a professional level, but also at a social level. And uh, uh, all those who, who have come in touch with you and who have visited your place, uh, 
uh, we could never forget those evening dinners. <laughs> <laughs> Having to be hosted and uh, you folks do it so well. And uh, how do you find such a time and enthusiasm and energy? See, I to travel to many places, both in the country and outside. And everywhere I go, I meet people, all kinds of people. Many people invite me. There is a thing of reciprocity. Now see what happens. Uh, the same thing I feel that with my children will be going out. They will also be interacting. Somebody would be inviting them for um, a food or a lunch or a dinner or some help must be given. Now, what is the way in which we can repay that? Mm. And I will come back to a very interesting uh, analogy for that. Mm. So we then say that wherever we can, we should be able to socialize. We will be able to have a get together. There will be a learning. Of course, there is an effort involved. And here again, Gitika does all the cooking. But I have a very interesting analogy for that. And um, I'll take a minute to describe mm. that. Uh, just think for a moment mm. when we send our greeting card mm. on either Christmas or Diwali or New Year. Mm. And uh, do this little analysis sometimes that uh, to how many people you send and how many people send it back to you. Mm. And believe me, Vishwas, it's my feeling that uh, there is no one-to-one -one relationship. If I send it to 100 people, mm. then there will be at least 30 or 40 who will not reply. But there will be another 20 to 40 people, the new ones who get added to whom I had not sent the card. Mm. 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 Okay. So now this goodness of sending a card or of remembering anyone, how this will continue in this world if everyone says that usne merko nahi bheja, main usko nahi bhejunga. Okay. So the point I'm making is that all those people who entertain me or Gitika or Vinayak or Vinam anywhere in the world mm. are not the ones who are coming to our house. Mm. Those who are coming to the house are different. So if you stop that, so that is the spirit behind that, that if that goodness has to continue. And again, every time I invite anyone, I have the face of my two children in front of me. Mm. That if they need some time, some help, who will be the person to help them out. Mm -hmm. And today, with all this effort in last 35 years, there is a goodness for the Mathur family. Yeah. So you may say a little selfish character in that, mm -hmm. but I also feel it that selfishness is okay, but uh, there is a thing of spreading of the goodness. And mm -hmm. that goodness can happen when you continue with that. Yeah. And, uh, and see, eight or nine out of 10 times, the only thing you can do to another person is to talk nicely. Everybody comes that when I meet and talk to that person, there will be some intelligent talking and there will be something over there, uh, some pleasantries over there and some sensible talk over there. Right. And uh, one thing as a family we do, we never criticize anybody. Operate on people's strength and forget about the weakness. Either plug yourself or forget about that. Right. I mean, you know what, that is why I, in the beginning, when I said that if I have to introduce you in one phrase, it's often, I often say that uh, Vinod Mathur is equal to man with mission, with full of passion, but also loads of compassion. The family was a Desi family. And now it has expanded to be an international family. How was yes. to embrace uh, daughter-in-laws, uh, which are um, not of uh, Indian citizenship? And how have they uh, acclimatized or embraced you in return? And I'm sure looking at that picture in your uh, dining hall in Chennai, it's such an amazing, uh, blissful uh, exuberance of... Uh, love for each other. See, first of all, I would like to tell all our viewers and parents in particular, see, we all want our children to excel and we want all of them to study in nice colleges and universities. 
and uh, which is now to take place at the end of class 12 itself. So today, once you finish your board, you need to move out. Not everybody is living in major towns and so you need to move out uh, over there. So see, once they have moved out, parents have to reconcile that they will have a different trajectory in life. You also want them to excel. You also want them to move out. You also want them to spread their wings. Mm. Now, once you have decided to allow them to spread their wings, there is no clipping back. This is the first message that you have to give them the trajectories to fly, to carve out their own world, to look for their own partners. And in this whole process, what stays is the family values. See, the first 15 years uh, of the child in your house gives him all the family values for which your family stands for. See, in, in my entire discussions with my two children, I have only said one thing, that uh, as a parent, my role is to tell you what is right, what is wrong. Mm. After that, it is your choice. Mm -hmm. I don't want to come back, you to come back when you fail or when you struggle that uh, we were young, we were not knowing it. You were very old, you knew everything. Why didn't you tell us? And what we have been extremely lucky with our children mm. is again, I will repeat in Hindi, such ka bodh. Mm. What both you understand the perception of truth. So this is what I'm trying to say hmm. that maine apne bachon ke saath mein unko sach ka bodh sikha diya. Iske aage aapko jo karna hai aap karo. Agar aapko American pasand hai to aap American pasand karo. Aapko Italian pasand hai to aap Italian pasand karo. All hmm. those choices are yours. And hmm. once you make the choice, you have to stick to the choice. Yeah. So that is what has happened. And therefore, we were very lucky that uh, both of them have picked up and in interestingly, both are American citizens. You are addressing a lot of young people through this uh, uh, Vishwas in conversation. Uh, many would like to be as successful as you are. What would be your message uh, to all of these uh, youngsters who would like to enter into the field of academics, into the field of uh, science diplomacy, into the field of biodiversity and environment? See, Vishwas, you have asked a very tough question. The reason is that there is no single ingredient for success. There is a whole range of things. And uh, that is what when I see our youth sometimes, everybody is in a rush to acquire and achieve success. Nothing wrong in it. You can be ambitious. You can have your own dreams and desires. But then you have to work for that. You have to make a conscious effort. An effort not in one direction, but in multiple directions. Because as I said, there is no single ingredient. It is also important that your means are also clear. When I say means, this is something I want to imbibe the value system in the children and all those who are hearing that uh, your success has to be based on truth. It should be based on simplicity and it should be based on scientific endeavor. You need to bring all these things together and you cannot hope that uh, if you miss out on one, there is a substitute for the other. There is no substitute for sincerity. There is no substitute for hard work. There is no substitute for being straightforward. And mind you, the most important thing in this life is your tongue. What you speak is very, very critical. I'm not saying that you speak all the time sweet things, don't mean them, but language is important. Your body language is more important. And therefore, my, my appeal to everybody would be who is listening to me is that uh, please factor them. When you are in anger, hold on to your anger. And the last thing which you need to do is to train your mind. See, this is something very, very interesting. You, if you think 
happiness is not something which gives somebody gives to you on a platter you need to earn it you need to um, uh, imbibe it you need to produce it so those are the kind of things i would say that uh, and there is no ingredient of success there is no single way for success and uh, while competitiveness is fine but it should be of a healthy character each one god has given some attributes try to recognize them i see in every lecture every meeting i go i keep listening very carefully who is saying what and uh, then say that uh, uh, the first time uh, if there is a new thing the thought comes in my mind that why i did not think about it so i challenge myself that uh, there is something wrong in my own system why i did not perceive that Mm. and once i have perceived that then question comes that can i do similar or can i do better mm -hmm. so i think uh, i would say that there are many many things in life which one has to study and lastly i would say life vishwas is a package you get some things you don't get some things you need to define and constantly rework and that's why everything i do there is a plan a plan b plan c it goes up to e f some people say they go up to z also <laughs> so the reason for doing that is that uh, if you have thought through these plans mm. nothing will come as a surprise to you therefore my last uh, uh, mantra would be that there are two ways in which one can live life mm. one is by design and one is by default and my wish would be everybody should live a life by design you can't just live by saying that i live life by design but i don't have a road map i don't have a plan you you know what i'm saying there will be several things which you need to do but do not live life by default ye ho jayega to bhi theek hai nahi ho jayega to bhi theek hai somebody else is driving you i i don't think so uh, that is a good way to lead life uh, although i should not sermonize everyone but mm. uh for me and for my family our wish and desire is to live life by design sometimes we are successful sometimes we are not so what do you think is uh, vinod mathur's uh, habit or what some of the things that vinod mathur would like to do at one uh, stage or the other of his life i i i forgot telling that there is a thing called a to do list in my life and uh, uh that uh, diary and pen is always with me even during sleep time although i sleep very well from midnight to 5:30 but if i get up or uh, remember anything i will quickly write it on that because if you don't do that then things slip over there the things which i enjoy are movies in my school days college not school days college days i was a, a great movie buff and the kick was to do it, uh, to to see that movie on the first day of release so every friday uh, you would find me uh, in a hall to do that and later when we were living in dehradun uh, and fortunately geetika also shares that habit so we just enjoy seeing movies over there and mm. now of course we have netflix so every time we relax or we want to relax we will just quickly see a hindi movie and uh, if it is an action movie it will uh, engage me more than anything else <laughs> and yeah. of course uh, cooking i used to do early quite a lot mm. but then uh, ever since gitika took up and she mm. of course cooks much better mm. much methodical much systematic over there so uh, for her everything is uh, excellence mm -hmm. for me sometimes uh, in some aspects uh, i compromise on that i must admit that what i have picked up with you is uh, uh with the mission passion and compassion you are also an amazing storyteller did you realize that ever <laughs> no. all that you need is an app that can type what you speak and i'm sure you will have many books too published because the story that you tell has an energy and it has its own uh, cinematic or dramatic uh, side of it 
and yet it has its own message that reaches to the person who needs to capture it and i think that's an amazing uh, quality for vishwas i have uh, only two words to describe and those two words are that you are a self made man my conversation with vinod can continue for another couple of hours but then this is good enough for this time more can be later do let me know your feedback and comments and yes if you would like to see any person of eminence on the episode of vishwas in conversation then do write their names and the contacts in the comments below see you then in the next episode of vishwas in conversation with yet another person of eminence and a person of my choice till then stay home stay safe and live the life to its fullest